Today I'm happy to welcome to our program Shelly Mitchell, who has a new appointment within the Division of Agriculture as our Youth Horticultural Programs Extension Specialist. Well, Shelly, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Can you tell me a bit about the programs that you're involved with? Okay, I'm a state coordinator for the Oklahoma Junior Master Gardener Program. Mm -hmm. So I work with mainly youth in grades three through eight because that's what the curriculum was written for. I am also the FFA Career Development Event Superintendent for Floriculture, which is an annual event involving all FFA youth from around Oklahoma. And I also do 4-H activities such as judging at state fairs and helping grade record books. Okay, and you help educate teachers on how they mm -hmm. can use these programs in their classrooms as well. Exactly. Well, we're going to be visiting a Junior Master Gardener program later this season, and today we have a wonderful activity that gardeners can do with their children or their grandchildren. So why don't we get started? Okay. Well, we're working on establishing a bean teepee here in our new children's garden to give our kids something to play on, but also some nutritious food. Shelly, can you walk us through the steps involved? Sure. The first thing you need to do is you need to establish a circle that's about four or five feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. And you want to go around the edges and just dig up a couple of inches so that you have a place to put the poles when you're going to build your bean pole teepee. And you only have to dig a couple inches because the poles don't have to stand up by themselves for very long before the beans will help anchor them down to the ground. Yeah, once the vines start, start climbing and the roots establish, they're going to help hold those poles down and stabilize our teepee a little bit. Well, what are we going to build the structure with? Okay, the structure you just basically need about 8 to 10, maybe 12, 6 to 8 foot long poles. Mm -hmm. And you can either go to the store and buy bamboo poles or you can go cut some cut some or find some sticks from things like this, this is the crepe myrtle. Mm -hmm. You want to look for sticks that have more of a surface to it. Th these are okay but they're smooth and the vines really want something to bind to mm -hmm. so the texture on the sticks gives it something to grab onto easier and if you leave little nubs as you're cleaning off the stick that'll give something else for the vine to attach to as it grows. And these uh, crepe myrtles are really nice because the the branches are so tall and linear, it makes a really good um, material to work with and we need to clean those out and thin those out over time anyway. So I'm going to finish cleaning these up and we could start setting our poles in the ground. Okay, now we're ready to start lashing about three poles together. We're going to lash three poles together to make a little sturdy tripod that we can set up and then tie all the other poles to it once we get it stood up. Now there's no set way to lash these together. The main thing is you want them to be able to move a little bit as you're setting it up, but you want them to all stay together through the growing season. So as long as it stays together, that's the main thing. And this little tripod's gonna act like our anchor and kind of hold the, uh, the rest of the poles so that we can start leaning against them. Okay, we have our tripod ready. Let's get this stood up. We want to spread the legs out uh, in a triangle and push them into the soil as much as possible. Okay. We got that side. Okay. And now we're ready to start adding our other poles, huh? Mm-hmm. And we're going to use our center tripod to support all these poles. And we're going to make sure to leave a doorway on the front and on the back so the kids can come in and play in it, go in the front, go out the back. Okay, and that tripod's nice and stable to help hold all these up. Okay, well now that we have our poles situated, we want to hold them in place so it'll be easier to lash them. So we're just going to put the soil around each of the ends of the sticks just to stabilize it and hold it in place. Doesn't have to go very deep, only a couple of inches because once you plant the beans in about a week or so, the beans will tie it to the ground and anchor it for us. So it doesn't need too much. Now I'm going to lash all these together to help stabilize them a little bit more. I'm just going to weave my twine in and out 
making sure to get under, especially underneath the original um, three that I tied together. That'll just help to stabilize the, the overall teepee a little bit more. Okay, our teepee is nice and secured. And uh, most of the time, these have one entrance, but we left two to make a tunnel into our secret garden. All right, we're ready to plant our beans. Okay, now we're gonna plant beans, but you don't have to plant beans. You can plant gourds, you can plant honeysuckle, you can plant cucumbers, anything that vines. And if you wanna have it year round, for years and years, you can plant perennials. Well, we're gonna plant pole beans, and pole beans vine. So we're gonna place about four at the base of each pole, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna thin back to get to about the two strongest ones after we see which ones grow the best. Now what we're doing here is using a stick to dibble. This is called dibbling when you put, make little holes in the ground for the seeds. And you want to go about twice the depth of the seed. That's about the right depth to plant it at. Too deep and it won't come up. Too shallow and it'll dry out and it'll die. So we're just going to dibble with some sticks. They have professional dibbles but you don't need to. This is more fun for the kids to just use a stick. Okay, so we finished with the twine here? Yeah, now some people have been told to like tie the stakes together and provide more stability for the bean teepee, mm -hmm. but that's not advised because when these grow, you want them to grow straight up. If they have these cross pieces, oh, right. then they'll grow along here and they'll go around it and they'll choke each other out okay. and it won't grow as well. So it's not advised to tie them together. Okay, well our beans are gonna germinate in about one to two weeks and at that time we could come back and thin them out to the two strongest plants. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is water these guys in. Well, Shelly, it's been fun working with you today, and I'm looking forward to some more projects together Me too. with you. Thanks. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.